All right, so I'm in the programming room right now. I'd like to go over the second half of my program in MasterCAM since it's a little bit more intricate than the first half. For the first tool running on the second side, we have a CNMG 432 OD rougher. It's in the upper spindle. We're going to be using the same speeds and feeds as the first op when we were roughing out the OD and facing it. But this time, I'm going to cut the maximum spindle speed to 800 RPM maximum because I'm not holding on to a whole lot on this part and the part is so big. Just to make sure it doesn't come out of the machine when it's speeding up the RPM, we're going to put a limit on that. Normally when I run this kind of tool, I like to run my face pass first and that establishes my overall length of my part. So when I was first programming this tool, I actually saw that the bottom of this tool holder, the KM50 extension I use, it's actually going to hit against there if I didn't turn across the OD first. Now I could have got a longer extension, but I could make it work by flipping the operation. So we turn the OD first. So we'll be able to use our tool holder if I clear out the front of the part. And then by doing that, my tool clears when I need to face it because there's no longer material in the way anymore. So that's one of the advantages of importing tools, is it allows you to catch those kinds of things before you run your part. The rest of those parts all milling. The first milling operation we're going to do is we're going to start facing the material with a shell mill. I have a two inch Stelram running. We're gonna go 11,000 RPM at 300 inches per minute. Again, because this isn't the most rigid setup and the material is so big, I'm gonna take smaller depth of cuts. We're gonna go 100 thousandths for the depth of cut and step down. The spacing pass that I'm doing is actually a 2D operation. So I couldn't import my model into this pass. So it doesn't know where my stock is. So I had to tell this in the linking parameters how far off it was from my final cut. So that same pass I actually took and I duplicated it and then I put it on the other sides of the part where it needed to be faced. So we have one in the front of the part, we have one on the side of the part. I transform the pass so that it flips it around and then it does it on the opposite ends, the same pass. Finally, I do one last face pass across the smaller surface on the back of the part. The entire time, it's running at the same speeds and feeds as the first pass. After the shell mill is done, we call back our 3 quarter inch core 5 end mill that we used to rough out on the first operation. And we're going to be doing some pocketing with it. So the toolpath I used was one of Mastercam's 3D toolpaths, the OptiRough Pass, and I told that tool to run at 10,000 RPM at 350 inches per minute, and I gave it a 20% step over. So I actually told it to duplicate my toolpath, make a new tool plane so that my tool can run at this new angle, and we just took the exact same toolpath and we just use this new tool plane, so it's the same pass, just at a different angle. The next tool path we got up is ball tracking, and I'm going to take a half inch ball end mill, run it at 150 inches per minute at 10,000 RPM, and we're going to ball track the very front of the part where this nose is. So we have a 5,000 step over 
and it's a very fine pass. The next tool we're running is the inch and a half drill that we used on the first stop. So on the first stop, we drilled the front of the part, we spun it like a lathe. This time we're doing side drilling, so the material is going to lock into place and then the drill is going to come in from the sides. The drill isn't long enough to go full depth, so what I did was I drilled halfway through the part, retracted out, and then rotated the part 180 degrees and came back in with the same tool path. It was really easy to do with Mastercam's transform tool path function. After that's done, I take my 3 quarter inch core 5 end mill from the first operation. We're going to do a circle mill pass where I actually do a spiral to rough and finish the counterbore of these drilled holes. I have a 7% step over on this tool that's going to make it look very nice. And then once again, I use the transform tool path function to flip it around 180 degrees and do the other side of the part. After that's done, I duplicated my earlier face passes that I did with the shell mill and I brought them over to do finish passes this time. So I took out all the depths of cut that I did. So it's just going to the final depth. And then we do one final finish cut on all of the surfaces that got faced earlier. I'm using the same stell ram that I used to rough out the material. This time I dropped the speeds to get a nicer finish. So I'm going 7000 RPM and the speed is at 100 inches per minute. Now I'm going to bring up a 1 inch core 5 and we're going to use it to finish the floors and walls of the pockets. I'm using a 2D dynamic pass to finish. I'm using a 70% step over so that I have less tool marks on the floor of the part. For the speed, I went 5000 RPM at 100 inches per minute. After that, we call back up that ball mill, the same one we used a couple tools ago. I tilt the tool at an angle and I ball track the outer radius of the part. This is done with a morph pass in Mastercam. I'm using the same speeds and feeds and the same step over as before. After that, it ball tracks the radius where these two face passes meet, and that's why I have the tool rotated at this angle. Then I did a transform pass and I took care of the other side of the part. The next tool coming up is the 3 8 chamfer tool we used on OP1. We're going to use this tool to just chamfer the two pockets and then the two counter bores. Now it's been a while, but now I have a lathe pass that's going to be doing a finish operation. I don't need to face the front of the part because the ball tracking earlier took care of that. But I do need to turn the surfaces that haven't been milled. I'm running it at my finish speed of 800 SFM, 4 thousandths inches per revolution. And that's just going to go all the way to the end of the part. That brings us to our very last tool, which was the Swarf Pass. I used that 1 inch core 5, and I used the side of the tool to produce an end mill along the front of the part. It's a very tricky pass to do, because we have to make sure that we have enough clearance for the tool to rotate properly. I actually modeled my tool holder and I got it as close as I could to the actual tool. That way when the tool is moving in different angles, I was able to see if the tool holder was going to interfere and hit the face of the part. It's a pretty crazy tool path with all the axes moving at the same time, but with Mastercam software, it made it very easy to do. There we go, part's all done. We had a crazy amount of milling on the second op, that was awesome. 
I don't even know if you can call this the lathe part at this point. It was almost entirely milling on the second off. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.